Now this video series has got to over 50 videos by now and you've probably if you watched along heard me say many times that nothing is going to be as simple as you expect it to be and I thought I'd give you one last example of that. Now you may recall me talking about making the panel detachable and doing that by way of building some plugs and sockets using these crimp pin terminals. These are called DuPont crimp um, terminals or something. I'm saying terminals because this one's a pin but we can do pins and sockets. I'm just doing pins because these go into the Arduino directly. Now the problem with this is you, there is a tool. I bought the tool. This is the, the proper tool. This is I think an SB28. It's not made by DuPont but it's a faithful copy. Sorry SN28B it's called. And it will crimp, well, different thicknesses of crimp connectors. The ones we're interested for this application are the 0.25mm connectors which are the smallest so this tool features a die with three different crimp sizes. We're only using the, um, the smallest one, 0.25mm. Now along the way I've discovered an entirely new sub-genre of YouTube videos which is how to crimp DuPont connectors with one of these tools. And there are literally tens or possibly even hundreds of videos. There's no way you'll see this on the video. These are insanely small and the only way you can really see what's going on, well I say that, you know, this is my tired old eyes is to use some sort of magnifying glass to have a look. I mean, this is a very clever and intricate system, but it's not at all easy to use. It's insanely fiddly. What you need to know is, this is not as simple as it looks. It's not just a pair of pliers and squashing a bit of metal. This is actually a precision tool, and if you were to look very closely at the, the business end, it's much more detail, de detailed than it appears to be. There's two separate crimp zones. Now, I said we're using the 025 millimeter crimper which is the end slot if you like on this die but if you look closely at that it's separated into two different zones there's a kind of a ridge along the middle and that's because there's there's two different in fact there's three different things on this pin that you need to be aware of there's there's two things that get crimped independently to different thicknesses one is the thing that holds the insulation for the end of the wire uh, the second thing is the the two little flaps that actually crimp to the wire and make the electrical connection. The third thing is a little square blob that engages with a, a spring clip on the connector. Now if you're going to do this, what can I tell you short of making an in, entire video about this? You need to get this thing positioned in the tool at the right place, then you need to insert the wire and then basically you squeeze it and, it and it crimps it. The hard part is getting the thing in the right place and really stopping it at all costs from rotating as you start to crimp it. That's the number one problem you're going to have. There's no trick to doing that. You just have to make damn sure you're holding onto it tightly, watching very carefully until the machine has a tight hold of it. And then you're set. Uh, you can insert the wire and, and you'll get a good crimp most of the time. That said, you should plan to buy many more of these pins or these so sockets than you're intending to use. They do come in, you know, like this one came with I think 210. You can get them in roll rolls of a thousand. Uh, plan to throw away, you know, 25% of the pins you try and crimp. That's because some of them off the roll come off deformed, but most of them you screw them up in the process of trying to crimp them. I almost gave up and you could solder onto these quite easily and then use a heat shrink and that would that would be fine and in fact I was almost at the point of doing that the only reason I didn't was I kind of got the hang of being able to do them reasonably reliably and if you solder onto them you, you lose out on the ability to put them in these these housings you know for example for the autopilot it'd be nice to make a six-way plug with just the autopilot connections and that means when you plug them into the Arduino it's just easier to keep track of which is which. Anyway, I'm going on at great length about this. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about the construction. I think we're going to have a... we'll go and check it out. So I think that's all I'll say about the construction. Let's go and check it out. Well the new autopilot panel's finished in terms of the hardware. It's built, it's installed in my cockpit now. Fits there nicely place the old one and I uh, had hoped to be up and running now 
but not so fast. I've just done the, the software, or an initial cut of the software, which is essentially the, the event handlers at the air manager end, and it's behaving a little bit unpredictably at the moment, so it sort of works a little bit partially. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll need to just spend a bit more time figuring that out. You know, we've, I've set it up at the moment, so I've got some uh, precipitation, and you can see we've already got some ice, so the ice gauge is reading got blue light on at the moment that matches the light on the on the air manager console. One of the things that's not working properly is the altitude alert readout. That was working earlier. I think the problem is I've put in a bunch of different event handlers, I'm saying event handlers, uh, the variable subscribes in air manager and I'm not sure whether it's better to put one subscribe with lots of variables or to put several subscribes with small list of variables so I think that might be part of the problem because independently these things were I mean you saw the lights working on the prototype you saw the digital readout for the altitude alerter working so all that works essentially so we're gonna have to do a bit more let's just if I just try and show you a couple of things the panels working all the switches are working so it's working exactly as the old panel used to work it's the indicators I haven't got sorted yet now that's interesting, you see the wing ice just went from blue to amber and the blue light went out correctly but the amber light hasn't come on so another idiosyncrasy there well now it has come on so it came on with a, a big delay again I'm sure this is something to do with the event handling your damper we can select, that works again it's unpredictable but that seems to be working reasonably predictably the, the modes for the autopilot well you see there came on okay but trying to deselect that if I leave that alone again after a pause that might deselect beta range oh. left beta light should be on try the right one the right one's come on it's gone off. Left one. Both. Well, they both come on there. So you can see that's unpredictable. We'll leave it there for now. I'll be back to do a proper flight once we get this pinned down and we get the software bug sorted out.